so good evening all uh, we are here with the international lectures week 10 and uh, we have with us dr carlos for delivering a lecture on crime scene investigation and the new technology dr carlos uh, thank you for accepting our invitation for uh, taking a session on crime scene investigation and the new technologies and i will be very grateful uh, on behalf of sherlock institute of forensic science that our uh, true forensic sciences director accepted our invitation so <clears throat> we uh, welcome you for uh, this international lecture series let me introduce uh, dr carlos many of you would know uh, many thing about him but uh, due to the things i have to introduce him uh, carlos is a msfs he is a science director of true forensic sciences mr carlos earned his college degree of public security administration at carabineros bicheri school in 2001 in 2002 on his uh, certificate reforma uh, processual penal by issues effectos and law functions like a, in english if i say is a criminal procedure reform and its impact on the police functions dictated by the police science academy of uh, carabineros de chile in 2003 he obtained his specialization in criminalistics from the same uh, police agency and later mr carlos earned a several certificate of different courses made in argentina germany spain peru and us in 2012 obtained his master degree in educational management at uh, andres velo university in chile then 2016 earned his master in forensic sciences at uh, at shenemide university of the honolulu usa and he is currently as a professor in uh, this university also Uh, throughout his career mr carlos has performed important positions such as sub director of the criminalistic laboratory of the carabineros the chile police agency in the city of uh, punta arenas chile expert of ballistic laboratory of the criminalistic laboratory of uh, carabineros the chile police agency in the city of uh, uh, santiago chile chief of the copyright and the forensic anthropology of the same chilean uh, forensic science agency and dr and director of the criminalistics laboratory of the carabineros de chile police agency in the city of tecla atelca chile mr carlos phd candidate in forensic science in the institute of legal sciences from the merit state uh, mexico now this is just his brief introduction and he had done a lots of work related to the um, different workshop investigations and other things so i once again uh, thank you uh, mr carlos for accepting our invitation and we have a 3200 plus participant registered participants for this uh, event from 4520 and 530 organizations are involved in this process and these are the few countries name uh, i have mentioned here from the participant we have i welcome you all for this wonderful session going to be uh, delivered by mr carlos on topic crimes in investigation and new technology so i will uh, request mr carlos to uh, begin with your session thank you no uh, thank you for your invitation thank you all of you for being here with a uh, uh, with me in this conference uh, i hope you you will enjoy it so i will start sharing you can see it right now right yeah perfect okay perfect so again thank you so much for for this invitation i'm, I'm really happy to be with you guys um Uh, my my goal for today is, is uh, uh, teach you a little bit about the the crime scene investigation and the new technologies you can use uh, in the during the the crime scene processing and the crime scene uh, investigation itself. So uh, I'm member also from the International Association for Identification and also from the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. Uh, so there you go. that are my social media so if you want to uh keep in contact with me or with true forensic science it's an institution i work uh i'm working as a forensic as a forensic scientist also as a science director so feel free to reach us using the 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 social media uh facebook facebook sorry twitter instagram um LinkedIn or my YouTube channel.
channel. So also if someone speaks Spanish, I, I have a podcast uh, in Spotify and all the, the platforms in for for podca podcasts so you can you can listen it the, the this show so also true forensic science is is the official seller from lean pv company this is a company who produce and made a forensic product so also if you you need to uh, have some uh, element for your work please send an email to anna at trueforensicscience.com. So she will be happy to send you the, the catalog and all the information related with the forensic product. Okay, during this conference, uh, we will talk in, the, in six and uh, seven uh, points. Uh, first of all, we will talk about crime scene processing. Um, after the sixth step of the crime scene processing, we need to know the, the basis of the crime scene investigation. This is a mandate, a mandate, the evidence, the interpretative value of the evidence. And after that, after we know everything and we have the basis of the what is the crime scene investigation is, we will talk about the new technologies and a few conclusions after that. And of course, we will talk uh, I, I will be happy to answer all your questions. Uh, okay, the first point, as I explained you before, is the crime scene processing. And the crime scene processing, if someone uh, and you talk about and, and you say, okay, I'm working as a crime scene investigator, the first thing people think it is in this guise, on TV shows, on CSI, NCIS, whatever, all the shows you can see on TV, everybody asks that. I mean, uh, for me, for example, they ask me a lot about uh, Hawaii Fio, the TV show or Magnum, because this is filmed <laughs> in Hawaii. So it's the same. So of course, this is glamorous because of, it's Hollywood or it's a big TV shows. So sometimes the reality is not even close, especially uh, because on TV you solve all the crimes that never happen in, in real life. So we will talk about a little bit about this because we need to approach us or try to keep as close as we can as on TV, meaning we need to try to get all the evidence as much as we can, interpret all the evidence as much as we can with all our knowledge and also using the technology for provide all this evidence to the court. So the crime scene investigation is basically the examination and the evaluation of the scene. So we need to evaluate and understand what is going on in the scene. We need to uh, understand and we need to think a lot of, 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 um, and also uh, pretty much all time, we need to think always outside the box. Um, we need to recover the physical evidence and documenting all this process in the place. And also we need to understand it's never a single right way to processing and to work in the scene. Could be the same kind of crime, but uh, sometimes you need to use so different process at the, at the time. So it's really, really important we need to understand according to the new ISOs 21043 published in 2018. Uh, in the first one, because our three, we will talk more about a little bit in the next slide. Um, but in the first one, we have the definition of the e scene. That means if the ISOs define this is because um, is standardized for all the world. So that is one important um, evolution of the forensic sciences. Uh, we uh, there started to standardize all the, th the terms or, or terminology related with forensic science or crime scene investigation. That is really important. I don't know, uh, uh, under my experience, especially in India, um, in Europe or, or, 
all the English speaker country, it's not a big deal, the terminology, because uh, you have books, everything, but here in Latin America, who the people don't speak the language, it's a huge, it's a huge stuff, um, the terminology, because they create new terminology, and the problem is, it's not even close with the standardized terminology. So this is good to know. In 2018, the ISOs, the 21043, uh, standardized all the terms related with the forensic sciences. And in the 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 one is important for us in this for this presentation is the ISIN. What's the the definition of the ISIN? It's a place that is subject or required a forensic examination. And of course, they say 3.9, so you can jump in the ISOs to the 3.9 and say the definition for examination. Uh, the first note for, for this definition is a crime scene, um, a common description from the scene. That is, they, that means they recognize this um, term, crime scene, as we use it, a crime scene investigation. Uh, is, is, a, is a value term. And also the second note is really important because they, they recognize the scene can be a person or an animal. They don't say life or death, so doesn't matter. So they are re uh, recognized since 2018 as a uh, crime scene as well. So we need to develop and we need to processing this uh, uh, it seems person or animal as I seen itself. So it's really important because they are um, amazing resources of evidence, this kind of uh, it seems. So also in the second, uh, uh, on the ISOs 210431 one and two, in the number two, they explain and they provide this chart. So, they create this requirement or this general requirement so uh, for explaining everything regarding with this scenario. So the first step is scene control, examination and re uh, recording. We will talk in the ne few next slides. Um, the item collection, the analysis, uh, and this is good, especially the analysis as so on, because they include the ISOs number three, but the un number three is under develop it, uh, development yet. So you cannot have access yet for this resource. And also the interpretation uh, is the number four and the reporting is the ISO number five. So you, if you see all these uh, requirement, everything is now standardized and probably it, 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 it will be in the near future so everybody who have the doubt okay how i need to do this or how is the best way to do a report for example uh, you need to check the isos number five is still of course under development so when it's finished uh, you can check it and follow the steps is in this uh, ISOs. So it's really important. Everybody can understand. You have these resources. It's just Google it. ISOs 21043. Paid for the for the fee for uh, having this uh, resource, and you have all the resources uh, updated, and you can provide the service for your work totally updated, of course. Uh, okay, the second, uh, the second point for this presentation is the six steps of the crime scene processing or the crime scene processing steps. And it, 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 um, we use six basic activities you need to do always in the crime scene investigation. It's, this is basics, the assessing, observing, documenting, searching, collecting, and uh, processing or analyzing the evidence. This is this is the right order to do it. This uh, processing. So please don't jump the number from the number one to the number se uh, six or the number five, uh, uh, and after you go to number three. No, you need to follow one to the six. 
So because that may will make the huge difference between the order or the chaos in your crime scene investigation. So we will talk about each point really, really briefly. Um, the first one is assessing is when you are right to the crime scene and you need to check the what is going on in the scene, what you have in your scene, and you need to um, uh, check everything and you need to understand, okay, what is gonna be my organization with my team for this kind of the crime scene? Uh, what kind of resources I have? I need more resources, I need more uh, expert. Uh, everything you need to figure out in this point in the assessing is a really, really first step. So after you have all this organization done, you can go to the next, next step. And the next step is the observing. It's an initial walkthrough uh, doing at the crime scene, using all your sense, um, and you need to start taking notes from everything. I mean, everything you have, everything related with uh, what you are seeing, you need to figure out, you need to do it because you start your work. This is a second step. You already started your work uh, uh, and you need to go on. The third step is the documenting. This is a crucial part of the processing of the crime scene because here you are taking all the notes all the photograph, all the video, and all the sketches uh, you need to do for your crime scene, everything. And everything needs to be related to each other. So the notes need to be related with the photograph or, or with the video or with the sketch, because everything, all where you're collecting or you are documenting in this step is gonna be in court in the future and you need to uh, show in court what happened that day, what you did that day. So people who never been in the crime scene know what's happened. They can have the, uh, the idea of your crime scene and you can explain that based of course in your notes or the photograph and so on. The fourth step is the searching. The searching of course process is because you are looking for evidence. That is the most obvious uh, part. You need to look, look, looking for evidence, but also you can search pattern. And these patterns can be related with fire or blood stain patterns or deep trail, whatever. Any patterns you can see in your scene, you need to uh, check it and prove it, and of course, documenting that uh, partners. This, uh, the fifth step is uh, collecting. So you collect physical evidence for preservation, of course, of the evidence, uh, or for further analysis. And this further analysis done, uh, meaning you can do it, the analysis in your lab when you arrive, or you, when you come back from the crime scene, or even you can uh, co collect or preserve this evidence for further analysis. I don't know, in, in 10 more years or 50 or, or, or 30 more years, that's happened in a lot of cases, especially when the technology is not uh, well, well developed yet, but you can keep the evidence in the right proper way and you can analyze it in the, in the future. So remember, it's a lot of cases right now is under review because now we have uh, the, 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 the DNA profiling or the um, a different kind of technology you don't have, I don't know, 30 years ago. So it's the same. You need always need to think in the future. What happens if I collect this evidence? I can keep it and we need to keep it in the perfect way. And the final step in the crime scene investigation is the analyzing or processing at the scene. Uh, this part can be in, in both the places, on the scene, on, on the scene, and also at the lab. Um, 
in the scene, you can processing, uh, you can do forensic reconstruction as well in the in the scene because you 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 need to I don't know shooting reconstruction or blood stain pattern reconstruction and so on. You need to reconstruct uh, everything at the scene. Uh, why this process is the last one? Because this process is really invasive. This process can be destroyed a lot of uh, part of the evidence, uh, or, or, or sorry, of, of your crime scene, and that never come back again. So that's why it's, it's the last step, because you need to um, uh, handling stuff, moving stuff around. So that's why it's the last one. Also, you can processing or analyzing your evidence at the lab. It did, and that is because in the scene, you don't have the resources or you don't have the technology to do it on the crime scene. They, of course, always is a, a ideal scenario is doing everything at the crime scene under my perspective, but always you have evidence you cannot processing at the scene, so you need to come back to the lab. The good thing of the lab is a really, really good control environment. It's a control environment, so you can control everything, temperature, your work time, everything is, is really nice to work on lab, of course. You can have more expert if, if, if you need it, the, but you can never come back to the original crime scene. So that is a pro and cons for doing at the scene or in the lab. Okay, for the third uh, point of this presentation is the CSI mandate. This mandate is because we need to be always objective, always. Always we need to look for the truth. As a scientist, we, we are, uh, our loyalty is with the science, not with people. So we need to avoid any kind of bias we need to uh, uh, be worried about, of course, always we will have pressure under us or shoulders made of other people to help or to solve the crime or in the opposite way. Uh, never we need to act in emotion. If you need to cry because the, the scene is really sad, that's happened sometimes. Uh, take your time, cry for a few seconds, that's it. Come back to work. Never try. Never work in emotion because it's gonna be uh, really bad with, uh, for you and also for your work. But we need to understand. Also, we have the truth versus the justice, and sometimes are not the same. But it, that is a part of the deal to work in this. Uh, to have this this kind of job. Okay. The fourth point is the evidence. We're really good on timing and. I think we're kind of fast. Uh, the evidence, we need to understand one of what kind, uh, what is evidence? Every, everybody talk about evidence, evidence here, here, everything over there. What is evidence? What evidence mean? And the evidence is really easy to understand because it's anything. Evidence can be anything that, uh, that helps to prove or disprove in a, a, a fact in contention, in a, Usually, it's, it's in, in the jury's uh, contention. So, the evidence can help you to prove or disprove a fact. That's simple. That's it. So, if you are in the street and you see uh, the street wet, probably the fact you can say is that is evidence to you can say last night rain or a few minutes ago rain in this place because all the, 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 the streets are wet. So that is kind of uh, one evidence, easy of course to understand, but that is one kind of the evidence. And you have two kinds of evidence, two types of the evidence. You have the testimonial evidence, and also you have the, uh, the and this testimonial evidence are, are a statement made by people that mean witness statement, victim statement, um, suspect statement. The problem with this statement or this testimonial evidence is subjective. So you can forget the stuff, you can change your 
testimonial evidence, whatever, uh, when, uh, anytime you want. Uh, you can say, I don't remember. And you can help other with the testimony if you change your testimonial evidence. So that's why it's, it's subjective. It's uh, useful, of course, it's recognized for all courts in the world, but that, that are the issues the testimonial evidence have. And also you have the other type of evidence is called physical evidence. The physical evidence is the evidence we work every single day, every single time at the crime scene. And this, the difference for with the testimonial evidence is the physical evidence is real. You can touch it, you can see it, you can prove that evidence one and again and again in different places and all people need to get the same results. Of course, it's a follow the same procedure. Um, unlike the person, this physical evidence doesn't lie because they cannot talk. I mean, they cannot lie because always they say the same answer. They provide you the same answer. Um, it's totally objective. So that's why it helps us. And also this physical evidence can help to support or refute the testimonial evidence. That's why it's important. They complement each other. The physical evidence complement the testimonial evidence. The testimonial evidence complement the physical evidence. But also the physical evidence has a small issue because it's analyzed by people. So that people, if they make mistakes, analyze it, of course, can get a wrong result. So that's why the expert who analyze this evidence need to have all the experience, need to have all the, train, the training related with, or to have it the best uh, way to analyze this evidence. Okay, the fifth point is the interpretative value of the evidence and the evidence in context. And we will talk a little bit about this in this point. Can I can have a whole complete class for this specific topic, but I can uh, reduce all of this in a few slides for you. All this evidence um, have a specific value. All the, every evidence we need to think as a small piece of in a puzzle. Uh, and all the evidence is a piece of the puzzle and we need to start collecting and put all these pieces together. Um, what is the difficulties for doing this? Sometimes you have missing pieces. Sometimes you don't have a picture of the, the outside or the reference picture of the your scene. You never have that in the crime scene. Uh, and also you can have more than one puzzle. So, uh, that's why it's, it, that is one of the big issue. Uh, try to do it this big puzzle. And we have different values of the evidence in the scene and, and also for interpretate. And these are five, and we will talk from the of all each of them now. So first. Uh, the, we have this evidence in context. And this evidence in context, context, sorry, the first one is all the predictable effect. The predictable effect are any change to the scene or the evidence that happen in a summer rhythm or with a regularity, we know it. And these provide us, at the moment we analyze this evidence, and a time of the reference. So for example, if I have a, a dead body in my scene, I know it, this person who lost the life will have some changes with some rhythm or regularity in the scene. Rigor mortis, liver mortis, our, uh, forensic entomology, some insect will be around. So 
I can predict that if this have this uh, phenomenon right now, I know within a few more hours, I will have another one and this, this one and so on. So I can predict that and that can help me to create a timeline regarding with the crime, the, the investigation in the, in the in scene. So that's why it's, it's important this predictable effect. The unpredictable effect is a second uh, evidence in context. Uh, these are any changes happen at the scene, but they are totally unexpected. Is I didn't know it's gonna happen. Sometimes some people can open the, the door uh, or, or, or close the door and the original way was open or the light was off and the original uh, was on or start raining or whatever. Everything are unpredictable. For example, if I have some paramedics coming to the crime scene to try uh, to try to save the life of the victim, uh, of course they will handling and the victim moving stuff around. All these unpredictable effect sometimes create some misinterpretation or can uh, give me some um, uh, value that doesn't exist at the moment of the scene and I can create a misinterpretation. So that's why it's important uh, to have all the information in your hands when you arrive or when you are working on the scene. How many um, I don't know, paramedic uh, came or is a firefighter work here in this scene or whatever other people or how many people in, uh, go inside the scene, et cetera. All these unpredictable effects, in some point, in some way, you can control it with having this uh, information, but sometimes it's, it's totally impossible. That's why it is called unpredictable. We have the transitory effects. The transitory effects are really, really good for create a timeline or time reference because, for example, if you have a glass of water with ice, uh, the ice is, is, is still there. I mean, I mean, it's not melt yet. So that provides us provide you a really short period from someone put this glass with water with ice in in that crime scene. So, if, for example, that is a, the the it must most uh, clear uh, sample of. The, this transitory effect. For example, if, if you touch the engine of the the car or the motor of the car, and it's still warm, uh, that means someone drive drove that car and park parking in that in that uh, spot. You touch it in really close time. So that transitory effect provides you a lot of good information, especially with time. Um, the relation, uh, relational details between the evidence is when you have some evidence in the scene and that evidence is related with the next one and with the next one and with the next one and so on. So you can predict uh, this relationship be because of the nature of the evidence and that add you, uh, add value of what you have. For example, they can uh, put uh, position someone in some specific place or move in other in other place or probably the, the uh, for example if you have um, something uh, at the scene uh, or in a clear area or void area as as I call that effect in, in the blood stain pattern. Uh, that means someone removes something so uh, after the crime so that relational detail provide you a lot of information and we have functional details uh, you need to understand the normal operational way from that specific item so i put two samples here two pictures Really, the one with the firearm is uh, what is not in good uh, operational condition. So it's probably not the best way to 
uh, do two or three shots uh, continuum. So that is a good, or, or that is an information you need to understand related with the functional way for this equipment. Or for example, in a gate, is the, the, is the lock doesn't work. Also, you can get uh, uh, that information because it's broke before or someone broke it after the crime or someone go inside the crime scene with the keys from the home. That means it's someone related with someone who live in the home. So all this information can help you to get your hypothesis from the scene and uh, prove or disprove some facts in the scene. So that's why are important. The evidence in context can help you to answer all these questions. What it is, what function did serve at the crime scene, what relationship with other items at the, and the scene have this element, or what is the timing and sequencing info you can have from the scene in this specific point or with this specific evidence. So that's why it's in, uh, are important everything. And this is the Avian evidence uh, link uh, triangle. So this triangle basically is what the local principle say, that every contact leave a trace. So you have the suspect, the victim at the crime scene related each other with the evidence. So when you have some of this part missing from the evidence, so for example, you miss Sometimes, I mean, the most usual part is when you miss the suspect at the crime scene. Uh, of course, uh, is the way you can uh, collect uh, or link the other two parts of the triangle to try to get the third one done. So that is, is our job, try to put all these pieces of the puzzle together to complete this evidence triangle. Okay, so we're going for our, our last point today. Uh, and we will talk about new technologies. Um, first of all, um, one of the most popular new technologies, I know it and I use, uh, uh, in my work in the crime scene is a, a laser total scan station or the total station, depending on the name of the brand, of course, this name change, but basically this laser create or scan the crime scene in a few seconds or in a few minutes, uh, created a lot of dots uh, in the scene, it's like a radar, uh, and sonar, they create these dots with the, the distance and it's really useful because you can uh, uh, you can save a lot of time uh, doing the sketching part. This machine do everything. So you don't need to do the, 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 the sketching in the old fashioned way with a pen, a piece of paper with a pen, start, take the measurement, uh, but the uh, one thing with this equipment are kind of expensive. So you don't have, no all agencies have access to this kind of equipment, but are really, really useful because you can create a 3D image of everything. You can show this in court. Everybody can understand. You can uh, recreate and you can be in and be seen, of course, several times and you can uh, watch all of these all times uh, you need for reconstruct a uh, scene in the future. Awesome tool. One, uh, a new uh, tool I, I used at the university a lot. We have this equipment specifically uh, in, in the, in, in the I, what I, I show you here. Uh, this is a 360 camera. 360 camera uh, is a great, great tool to uh, recreate and um photograph all you're seeing in 
real time. So you can get this 360 photograph of everything is around your is in. Um, I have, of course, I, I have this equipment in the university and also I have a normal uh, 360 camera, uh, our awesome tool. I, I play a lot with this equipment. Uh, I love it because you can see everything what happened around. Um, uh, probably they, um, they also, you can use it inside uh, or indoor scenes. That means, for example, in, inside a car or inside a room or, or, or outdoor scene as well, like I put in this picture. So they provide you a lot of information. You can watch this image. Also, you can use this uh, VR goggles so you can show it in code as well or you can analyze in VR uh, image as well. So I love this kind of equipment. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really important. Um, I, both are complementary, this, the total station, uh, the scan total station, um, complement, of course, the 360 photography and the photography, of course, complement the other one. So if you, if you don't have access for the uh, total scan station, you can have access much cheaper, of course, from this 360 photography uh, equipment, and you can provide a new tool for your report, a new uh, element, and you, a new view from everything, uh, and you can show it in court or in your report. This is, uh, again, it's an awesome, awesome tool. Um, of course, the alternate life source are a great tool, a great, a great element for, uh, and also a basic element for working the crime scene for the fluids and everything related with that. Now uh, we're moving forward from the light to the laser uh, in this kind of equipment. Uh, it's are kind of a little bit more expensive, but uh, it still works really awesome. Uh, uh, much better, of course, we can detect different, the best, uh, much better the wavelengths. And um, of course you can detect the photography, uh, uh, oh, sorry, the element really well. Also you have now some equipment um, in on the market. You can develop fingerprint without finger powder. So that is kind of uh, awesome good uh, as well because you don't need to put oh, a lot of powder, especially the black one, because the black powder is, is a mess and you can always get dirty, dirty with that. Uh, so using this specific light or some specific uh, uh, equipment, new equipment, you avoid the create this mess at the crime scene and you use different light and you can see the finger marks in different surface so you can photograph immediately it's really fast and it's is an great great tool as well so oh, i have double this presentation this slide so as a conclusion for ending my presentation um the you need to always follow the methodology of the crime scene investigation to have success in your process you have to, to have success to be successful in your uh, crime scene investigation you need to follow the methodology it's a science you need to follow the steps of this uh, science also you need to identify the evidence uh, and all the interpretation of this evidence is crucial so it doesn't matter if you collect all the evidence in the world in the crime scene, but if you don't have the knowledge or if you don't know who interpreted this evidence, doesn't work. So you need to have the knowledge. You need to be always be trained um, to be a successful crime scene investigator. You need to mix the knowledge, the experience, and your skills, your personal skills, and also the technology help you to improve all of these three specific skills I just mentioned. So um, 
the technology are awesome, are really good, but you need to have the basic knowledge first to use it to use the technology because it's the same. You can have a Ferrari in your home, but if you don't have a driving license or you don't, never drive, drove a car before, doesn't work. I mean, that is a that is a huge difference. I mean, you you can have the awesome equipment, but if you don't have the knowledge, doesn't work in that way. So, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for to the institute to invite me today to be in here with all of you uh, uh, in this uh, video conference. Uh, of course, thank you to True Forensic Science for uh, uh, allowing me to be in here today with you guys also. And so there are my, my, the True Forensic Science and my social media to you can follow me on website, emails, everything. So thank you so much. And then yet, thank you, doctor, for inviting me uh, to be in here today with all of you. So I, I think we need to open the, the questions uh, time now. <laughs> thank you, Carlos, for uh, explaining the, uh, from basic crime scene investigation to the advanced technology. Uh, now uh, I request you to uh, just allow me to share my slides. Sure. So uh, I will take a question from the participants, those who have raised the hand. Before that, I have a few questions from the uh, YouTube live also. So mm -hmm. uh, the first question from the YouTube live is, how difficult to do the examination of any manipulated crime scene? Any, sorry, what? Manipulated crime scene. Manipulate? Manipulated crime scene, the crime scene which is you know, evidences has been disp uh, dispersed intentionally. Ah, okay, I, I see, I see, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really good question. So you, uh, the, uh, the investigator need, uh, I mean, when you, you study crime investigation, you learn about the, um, the I always teach uh, it like a, a, a stairs, the crime is in processing and especially with the evidence if you have some evidence for example uh, under the ground and in this ground you have a lot of grass and after that you have evidence probably that evidence underneath under the all the ground or under the the grass sorry is not related with the crime because it's really old so you can you need to analyze of course everything but you need to, I mean, you need to collect everything, but also you need to analyze it. For example, if you have evidence with expiration date before the crime scene happened, it's not related with the crime scene. I don't know if, if, if they can, you can understand me the, the meaning of everything. Yes, yes. So, yeah, and no. yeah, you need to, and you need to learn more about it. We can we can discuss that part in whole complete other conference. But yeah, basically that is the, the principle for, from doing that. Yeah. Uh, now we have Professor Adas. He wants to ask a question. Sir, yeah. over to you. Uh, hello. Hello. Hello, Carlos. Hi. Yeah. First, uh, I would like to congratulate for this uh, extremely valuable presentation. Myself, belonging from the forensic medicine aspect. And uh, invariably, uh, we visit the scene of crime while conducting this, uh, uh, this investigating the high profile cases. So it was just till now, I was just thinking about that. It was just an experience. But the way you summarized uh, uh, beautifully in a scientific manner, what are the various steps and all, even I was not aware because these things uh, usually don't come under our domain. This go usually to the forensic science experts. But invariably, we have to visit the scene of crime. So your lecture was excellent uh, for me. I could understand that how to document it in a more scientific and proper manner. Uh, till the time, I was just, uh, you can say, um, uh, more concentrated on collection of various evidences and all those uh, correlating, but uh, not in a very scientific manner. So this, is, this was a very good uh, presentation from you. And uh, I, I got a lot of learning from this presentation. 
Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Professor, for your for your work. And of course, if you need anything, you have my email or <laughs> just contact me, please. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, Doctor Rajvansi, sir, your question. You can unmute and ask the question. Hello, uh, Doctor Carlos. Hello, hello, Doctor. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Well. I must really congratulate you for an excellent talk you delivered on crime scene examination. I just want to have one clarification here. Because whenever we pick up any evidence from the crime scene for analysis purpose and take it at, at FSL, we need to seal it. You know, in yeah. India, we have a system where we have to make a seizure memo and it has to be properly sealed before the two independent witnesses. Now, very often yes. it, is asked, it is asked in the court where is the seal kept? Is there any standard written guidelines? Where should the seal be kept after the evidence is sealed? Yeah, I, it's a really good point what you're talking about because I, I didn't mention right. because it's, uh, it's a other, I mean, I can talk about sealing or the processing of the physical evidence uh, uh, is, is, is really important. But I don't know what kind of sealing you use uh, in India, uh, the, the ideal ceiling is, uh, for example, if you put the evidence in an envelope, I mean, whatever size of the, the packaging of the, the you use for, for package the evidence, you have Patek, this tape. It's uh, you have this tape to seal, it, to seal the evidence, but no. this tape is, it, the, they read really easy. So it's really sticky. But when you try to open the, the envelope or the package, the this seal uh, this seal uh, is ripped really uh, really easy. But also you need to keep uh, the um, the pack the original packaging of the the evidence always. So for example, if you open the envelope, you you take away the evidence, you analyze the evidence of love, um, and you rip the envelope or whatever happened with that you put in a new envelope, you need to put the old one in the, in the bag as well, always. You need to follow and you need to keep always the, the, the original packaging and the ceiling with the evidence until the end, always. I think you are mute. You need to unmute the... So you are mute, sir. Thank you so much for this explanation. Yeah. I mean, we will take it up at the, with the correspondence with you if something else is required. Because of the time shortage, I'll just close. And once again, thank you for your talk which you delivered. No, thank you. And again, you have your my email, so you can contact me and we can talk more about it. I'm thank you. Thank place. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank uh, you. Dr. Tariq Wali, you can ask your question, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Tariq Wali, uh, Ravina, Chitari Ravina, you can ask your question. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. Thank Please you. Please ask your question. Yeah. Sir, uh, what is your role as a crime scene investigator apart from collecting the evidence and handovering it? Yeah, I mean, this is a good question because uh, most people think the crime scene investigators is just collect the evidence, are collectors, are not. The, the crime scene investigator need to interpret and create hypothesis what's happened in the scene based on the evidence. Of course, you collect the evidence, that is one of the part of the process, Hello. but you need always to uh, interpret what's happened there based on the physical evidence you collect. So that is really important because some people think it, or some, even some crime investigator, they think, okay, I'm just, I am a just collector. It, uh, it's not, I mean, they are, need to interpret it. They need to add value, as I mentioned before, you need to add value to the evidence. It's a piece of element. It's a piece of, uh, for example, if I collect this phone, is what well, this is a cell phone that's it 
but if uh, that cell phone, I add this cell phone is for a suspect in this point, uh, you need to create this value with the evidence you are having it. So that's why it's important. The crime scene investigator is in, uh, need to provide hypotheses, not need to provide uh, their critical thinking, what's happened at the scene. It's not just a collector of the elements. Yeah, Dr. Tariq. Okay, sir, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Tariq Wali, you can ask your question. All right, thank you. Now, now uh, yeah, yeah. from a yeah. cylinder, not all. Please, uh, the yes, sir. All right, thank you for the lecture, please. Uh, we know for sure that I know of forensic team of forensic organizations that have these new technologies, like the laser scan station, 360 photography, and alternate light source. My question now is, what if in a situation circumstance? Corona? You are speaking right. Sorry, I can hear you. Can you Sorry, hear I don't listen well. Your question is, is the, the sign. You can repeat. Can you hear me now? Yeah, no, now you can hear Hello. Me. Hey. Hello? Yes. Yeah, I hear you. Dr. Carlos. Yes. Thank you for the All right. I said what if in a, in a peculiar circumstance, a forensic investigative organization do not have these new technologies? Has any effect in the investigation? Uh, no, 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 no. The technologies is just for help the investigator to make easier the work and faster. But you can work in the old fashion, of course, with piece of paper. I mean, for investigator crime scene, uh, I can investigate crimes with a piece of paper and, and a pen on my brain, and that's it. Or you can have the whole, the best technology in the world. But you need to have the knowledge to apply this, this, this technology. Because as I, as I mentioned, uh, in the end, if you, you can have the most expensive lab with the most awesome technology in the world, but if you don't have the knowledge, it doesn't work. So it doesn't matter if you have the good technology or all technology, or even if you don't have technology, but if you have the knowledge to analyze the evidence and prove your, is, your analysis is correct, it's totally fine. Yeah. Vashri, you can ask your question. Uh, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, please. Hello. Sir, my question is, can we use 360 photograph uh, graphs for crime scene re reconstruction as we need to know exact measurement between two objects or we need a fixed point to reconstruct a crime scene? Yeah, it's a good question because some, some 360 camera don't have the capability to create measurement between two points. And it's just the photography is just a reference. Um, basically the, the 360 camera is a, is a good reference as a, the other photo, the normal photography. Uh, the, the, scan, the total station scanner, uh, they have this uh, capability with software to create one point or make the different, uh, the distance between one point to other one. Um, uh, I know the Oscar 360 uh, equipment uh, I used is it, the most advanced 360 equipment in the market. Um, and they have this capability to take some a few measurement from the photography. So again, depend of this, uh, the software, but if you have the basic 360 camera, it's just a reference as a, the other photography in the, the, the normal reflex camera. So. Uh, you cannot take the measurement. At least you have the software to do it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I have a question regarding the admissibility of the evidence in the court. Like how much footage they gave into the collection of the evidence and regarding the visiting the timing of the crime scene. Can you repeat the question? Sorry, because I, you're, uh, you're like a far, far from the microphone. Sorry. Uh, okay. My question is regarding the admissibility of the evidence in the court. 
like regarding the weightage given to the crime scene investigation, the mm -hmm. visiting of the scene. I am audible. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, it is like uh, how much weightage the U.S. courts given to the uh, visiting the crime scene, the timing of the crime scene, and regarding the collection of the evidence in the case. Uh, how time? Sorry. How like, how many times time do you go to a crime scene? No, the timing of visiting the crime scene, like uh, how how much time you have taken to visit the crime um, scene. The, I mean, it's not a perfect timing. I mean, it's, it's some crime scene are really short. Another you can take days. I'm working the crime scene taking me weeks. So all the crime scene are different. The the important thing is when you you need to say, okay, I work whole day here. Uh, I need to continue the work tomorrow, and you need to. Uh, you need to put a police officer to preserve the the crime scene to so no one uh, disturb the crime scene because in in some crime scene you cannot work on night. For example, when you have arsons in in homes, the ideal scenario everybody recommend don't do it during the night, even if you have lights, uh, artificial light, because the artificial light creates shadows and the shadow can make mistakes in the interpretation with the the burning stuff. So you need to take the time as much as the time you need it for processing your sin. So do the question in the court regarding the uh, visiting of the, the crime scene? Yeah, the, the admissibility or the yes. court visiting, yes. sir? And, yes. Admissibility. OK. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you follow all the procedures, if you follow all the methodology you don't have a, you shouldn't have a, any issue to the admissibility of the evidence in court so you as an expert you present your report with all the evidence and the admissibility and everything is is part of the job of the lawyers so but as as i know as i i know it's really rare uh, some court doesn't accept the the work of from ex some expert in the court is is really unusual. I, I don't know. It's, it's some cases. Probably the admissibility can be questioned in the in the in the contra interrogator in the interrogatory part after your presentation for the one part of the other one. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's always is is admissible. At least it's really far from the normal legal or scientific method so yeah uh, Avichar Sina you can ask your question mm -hmm. uh, uh, good evening uh, it was a great uh, session all together my question is uh, what would be the evidentiary value of the different technologies uh, used at the crime scene with respect to different transactions that has happened uh, you know as a part of offense so, uh, yeah, could you please elaborate on that? I mean, the, the, I guess of the, if the question, the, the, the technology is accepted in court, something like that? Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, if with this technology, uh, the ideal scenario, I mean, all this technology I mentioned is already proved and you have papers to validate this technology. With uh, any time when you have new technology, the idea is using it and if we, uh, and publish uh, these cases in, in, in journal because they, that help for validate uh, this use of, uh, this use uh, in, in different courts because it's different. You have some technology, new technology, and say no one using it before, or say yeah, I, someone using it, and here is the paper published in this uh, journal and they, they was, was allowed. So that's why I explained all the technology is already used and already allowed in court. Of course, every single day uh, you have new technology and you need to uh, use it. Using, and sometimes the manufacturer asks as, as a scientist to use this new technology to validate in, in, uh, with scientific papers uh, because when something is new, you need to prove it. Of course, you need to test it. And when you test, 
the idea the scenario is doing test all laboratory in control environment with and you know the possible result and after a several tests you can start using it in in the real crime scene Ankita Chaudhary, you can ask your question. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your lecture. So, sir, basically my question is based on a case study. If there is a meeting going on over a room, approx between 15 to 20 people, and during the tea break time, if a body is found on the back door of the uh, room, so, we, as you said, we, we need to collect things but also analyze it. So, all those 15 people would have been their fingerprints in the whole room. So how do we, do we collect the actual or we, how, how can we um, interpret the um, crime scene better, in a better way, as, you, mm -hmm. as your opinion? I want to know ab about your opinion. Yeah. Um, first of all, in that case, I will take the fingerprint from all of them to, to prove all of them was there or not. That is a, the, the first main, main thing I will do. Also, I will collect other kind of evidence, DNA or thing, um, shoe prints or footprints or lip prints or whatever other kind of evidence you can have on the scene. And also, of course, uh, I will see on, I will collect evidence and analyze evidence uh, on the victim so I can try to link the victim with the last person who have the contact. Uh, but yeah, in the a scenario you tell me right now, basically the 15 people, all, are, all of them are suspect until you prove it the, the, in the different way. So that is a, the, the way I, I will do the work. All of them are suspect and until I prove it with the uh, evidence, they are not, and so and so on. Yeah, Dr. Shalini. Good Thank comment. you, sir. You're welcome. Ma'am, your voice is not coming. It's not coming. Myself. Sir. Yeah. Now, now, Andiver, please. Yeah. Okay. A very good evening, sir. It was very informative and uh, wonderful lecture. And uh, it was my always, you know, <laughs> dream to attend your lecture. I'm really thankful to Ranjit because on Facebook also I used to, and I will definitely like to attend in person after maybe oh, a year or a please. two, your any course or anything with you. I just want to know if something, uh, because uh, crime scene investigation, I've attended many lectures and all this, if some way it get destroyed or something is disturbed, so is there any way you can just understand that yeah, it, it has been disturbed or um, something was... Uh, uh, we can understand by the scene that's going to the crime scene before our uh, examination, it was disturbed or it was destroyed. Someone has uh, tampered, tried to tamper this situation. Can we understand with the first look? Yeah. Uh, uh... Sometimes the evidence is destroyed uh, or disturbed the crime scene, and that's it. You can you can do nothing with that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's impossible. So uh, I always recommend we try to think always your scene is is already disturbed because you think okay probably uh, I need to be with more careful collecting the evidence and analyzing yes. the evidence. Um, Sometimes, in my, under my experience, you never have all the pieces of the puzzle together. Never. It's, it's yeah. really real the case. You have all the pieces, nice, perfect, and clean, uh, like at the movies. <laughs> that sometimes <laughs> never happen. Yeah, or it's really real. Uh, so that is a, the experience of the investigator to to discriminate mm -hmm. what is the evidence who wasn't disturbed with the, the, the already disturbed pieces. So yeah, I think yeah. that is experience. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Chika, you can ask your question. Yes, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Um, you asked, you said something about um, truths and justice. So in the, in the 
of lab analysis, can I can can one recuse themselves if they feel too close to a case? Yeah, the the justice and the truth. Sometimes you have the the justice, but sometimes you don't have the truth, or vice versa. Sometimes you have uh, um, in the opposite way. Uh, if someone, uh, and if I understand well the question, if someone uh, say I'm guilty from this crime and you don't have the evidence, uh, the right way to do it uh, is, of course, try to get some evidence uh, to prove that with the, this testimonial evidence of the, the person. Um, but again, no. sometimes... What I well, mean is... If you feel like you're too close to the case, maybe the person's like a, a loved one or a relative. So can you recuse? Can you recuse yourself, like away from that situation? Ah, if you are involved or some related with you are involved in the crime, you are investigating. Yes. yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I step away. Okay. okay. I step away so from the case. Yeah, that is easy, easy like that. I mean, is that is the ethic. I know it's hard because it's your relative. I always, yeah. I, I, actually, I always add, I ask that question to my student. What's happening if someone related is a, with you is, is, is committing a crime and you are investigating the crime? Uh, yeah, the, the best way to, uh, the, the right way to do is, is a step away and other investigator take the case. Okay, all right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Carlos, for uh, taking uh, time and uh, giving a wonderful insight about the crime scene investigation. As uh, we are not in a real place, but in a virtual place, uh, I, on behalf of uh, Sherlock Institute of Forensic Sciences, I will uh, request you to accept the certificate uh, <clears throat> of uh, your uh, uh, presentation. So along with this, I will also request my team member uh, those who have supported me, I'll uh, uh, thank you them, uh, Ravi Kalan Sudhakar. I'll request my other uh, team member dedicated who reached to the social media for posting about the lecture and reaching to the maximum people. And uh, my team member, I uh, like uh, you all can accept this appreciation certificate as a volunteer. Tanya, Kratika, Vaishnavi, Laksha, Janita, Kalash, Pooja, Seja, Afreen, Sudhakar, Sudam, Nitika. And I also like to all the uh, supporters, those who have supported in this continuous lecture series so that we can continue in the next, next lecture. So thank you all for your supports. You all will get your certificate within 24 hours. And uh, my team will uh, on a process to prepare a certificate and send to you all. So you all will get certificate to the 24 hours. Uh, with this, I like to again, thanks Dr. Uh, Carlos. And with this, uh, uh, I'm going to announce the next lecture on the Sunday, uh, that is the 14th, and it is by the one of the renowned person of our country. And he served in Saudi Arabia a long time. So Professor uh, Rakis Goria, sir, and he is going to take a session on uh, introduction and development of forensic nursing sciences in throughout the world. And it is a needy uh, task uh, that uh, forensic nursing should be applied for uh, in a, a different aspect of the forensic science. So he will give the insight about how the forensic science uh, how forensic nursing is important and how uh, he's going to give he a you know huge number of experience and by this uh, uh, as being a FHR member I like to announce on this also that uh, into uh, I like to invite you all in 2020 for uh, our symposium on the forensic odontology for the human life uh, human uh, rights and in this you all are welcome and by that uh, I'm hoping that uh, COVID situation will get over and we all can meet uh, physically instead of this virtually. So thank you all uh, for joining and giving a love to our this international lecture series. I once again, thank you uh, Dr. Carlos for taking our time and giving the valuable. And I request Dr. Carlos to give the concluding remark about this lecture series. No, uh, thank you so much for all of you being here today. Thank you, doctor, for inv inviting me to do in this awesome presentation. Uh, and, and, and with this, a uh, great uh, people is uh, with us. So thank you so much. If you have any question, just please reach me by my social media or by True Forensic Science. 
uh, I'm more than help you to uh, uh, more than happy to answer all your questions. So thank you so much again.